Why are you looking at that joint? God is good and He's good all the time. And sometimes we get to know Him more when there is a measure of trouble. Yeah. Yeah, when there's some trouble, we get to know who Jesus is. So before I begin, I want to say good afternoon to the host and all the senior ministers and all the ministers of the gospel and to the thanksgiver. Because what she's doing is giving God thanks for a reason. And her reason is that God will allow her to reach 60. And to reach 60 in a good condition. Because we have those who reach 20 and the condition is well for. Not for only physically, but spiritually. And she have a condition that is good physically and spiritually. So we bless God now. So she would have given God thanks because she went through something to reach 60 and she's thankful to the Almighty God. In the book of Judges chapter 3, God is speaking and he is saying that, you see the Israelites, all they would have seen me do, I will not take away all their troubles from them. Yeah. What he said, he said he will leave the Canaanites and the Jebusites and they to give them some problems. Yeah. <laughs> so when they get the problems, they will know who God is. So what I am trying to say to you all, God has leave some problems for you, for your trouble. Because sometimes when things become easy and Thank fast, you. Thank you. you start to forget who God is. That's right. So he leave the Jebusites in your life. He leaves some of the Canaanites in their life for you to realize that they have a supreme God who can defeat them. Oh, yes. And when they start to understand the power of the supreme God, then they start to trust in him more and more. But sometimes we just lack even by to be trusting in the almighty God. Relax. And the pastor would have preached about David. David would have laughed. David knew who his God is. He knew God. He believed in God. And he never strayed from God like the other Israelites and go to worship Baal and all those other idols. He stuck with God. And it's standing with God. God would have looked at his heart and this is why God would have said, he's a man after my own heart. But David did wrong. David did wrong. David did a lot of wrong. Badgering and if even we do wrong, but we are not presumptuous sinners because we would have found God. God is able to forgive you your sin. My God would have said to Peter, He said, Peter, Satan wants to suck you, but I have already prayed for you. You see, Peter was walking with God, he knew who Jesus was. So we're coming back to the Psalmist David. He knew who God was and he would have did wrong in the sight of the Almighty God. And when he did wrong in the sight of the Almighty God, he killed Uriah. Hmm. Oh, Jesus. And he asked God to forgive this. And our God is a loving God. But when you sin, there is a punishment to come. He said, the sword will never depart from your house. You have to be careful. When you look in your house now, Patrick, and all that you want to found Christ and you are doing the things of the Almighty God, it is be some because of something that you did when you knew Christ. Something you would have committed once you knew Christ and you was walking with Him. So for this reason, the sword is in your house. Look at the youths that are falling. David's son Absalom came behind him to kill him. And David was a man after God's own heart. And God would have allowed his own son to come after him because David used his word to draw the life of an innocent man. And he knew God. So we have to be careful even as Christians even as Christians having found God we have to be careful when we walk in with God because David did not look at any other God. No. But his word remained in his house. Thank you. Yes. Still remain in his house. So be careful. But I want to go further back, Patrick. I want to go back because our God is such a good God. You see, sometimes after God will have entered the 
God into our lives and you would have shown us who he is and we can give thanks, which we ought to do. Which we ought to do at all times. He told the prophet, have mercy. Hosea, he said, go down into the land of Hodom and I will show you what Christians and Israelites are like. Woo. <laughs> he will show you what the Israelites and the Christians today are like. He told Hosea, go down and marry a woman of ill repute. Bring her and give her, give the her your best. Have mercy, Jesus. Oh, yeah. And God has given us his best to what God says. He gave us his only. Have mercy. And yes. And we will have found Christ and believe in Christ. And still we are doing the things that the man of the world that is living in darkness yes, is doing. doing. We are doing that as well. Oh, yes. We are doing it and rejoicing in the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Not forgetting that God has eyes on you. Oh, yeah. And he's looking. The same way he showed to deliver, he said, whatsoever you would have done in this body, good or bad, would be brought to a judgment battery. Oh, yeah. So just tell yourself oh, you're crying. Yeah. Yeah. Just tell yourself that you are singing. If you are telling yourself that you are doing all that God wants you to do, and you added something to it that is not of God, you have no part with him. Because Saul had that problem. When God would have sent Saul to do a work, he said, kill all the Amalekites. He got a job to do. We are doing God's work, but yeah, because we are flesh and we are weak. What Saul did, he kept the best. The best, but the word of God said that was sin. He kept the best in brethren, and we live with our best sin inside of us. And coming in the house of God, and praising God with our best sin, God is looking at us. And when he went back in the book of Hosea, chapter 13, he told us, he gave us a chance, Patrick. At verse 14 and chapter 13, this is what God said. More yet, I will be, I will be, that scourge on you, death. Oh, death, I will be that scourge on you to show you that you cannot conquer my people. But we as Christians, when death comes before us, we start to run and hide because we fear death. And God said, the only thing you should fear is, of course, he was God. Because he is the creator. He is the giver of life and of death. And if you fear God, he said, I'm beginning at your wisdom. You start to do what God wants you to do. And God will have put that point in the book of Hosea and brought it forth in the New Testament when he came and you have mercy in the flesh of Christ Jesus. That man that would have pierced him, that man that would have beat him with many stripes, it is that same Jesus that was crucified and they took him down to the grave. It is that same Jesus that rose again, that he can say, Oh, that was thy sting, oh, great was thy victory. And all this, you have a reason to give God thanks. You have a reason to give God thanks because your sins are taken away by the blood of the Lamb that was shut on his altar. So, speak of life. Have it more abundantly. Get thanks to Jesus. Get thanks to Jesus. We have something. We have something that the man in the world don't have. We have a hope. It's Jesus. We have a hope. We have a hope. Oh, have mercy, Jesus. I hope God did not bless you and keep you and anoint you with an anointed spirit. We all need the anointing. We all need to forget that one o'clock in the morning. Twelve o'clock in the morning. And you still have rent. Give God thanks. God bless you and keep you. May the enemy have mercy.